Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Vietnam War. I'm Mike B. And today we're going to be taking a look at the weapons that were used by the North Vietnamese Army, Viet, Viet Minh, um, PAVN, NLF. Basically, as I said in the other um, videos like this, I'm just going to say NVA for the sake of keeping it kind of short. Um, I understand there was so many more um, forces, you know, subcategories of uh, forces that were fighting against the United States, French, and its allies. But I got to just keep it short, otherwise I'm going to have to say, you know, 10 seconds worth of uh, different groups every single time I uh, say the um, weapon was used by. So we're just going to go like that. And today we're going to be taking a look at the bolt action slash sniper rifles used by North Vietnamese forces during the Vietnam War. Uh, the first Indochina War, or would it be the second Indochina War and the Vietnam War fighting against the United States and its allies. So I'm going to try to get through this list relatively quickly it's a very long list not as long as the machine gun is going to be but um, this one's going to be pretty insane and like somebody said in the comments they use pretty much everything that would go bang so you're going to find that out in this list so we're going to start out really quick with the french model 1886 93 label rifle so these were left over from french colonial troops and you know left somewhere or captured at some point or just lost and somebody recovered it over the period of time that you know the French occupied Indochina, which was a long time. So these were used very, very early on by Viet Minh forces against the French, and uh, they were found throughout the entire war in caches and stuff, but I'm sure the ammunition supply kind of dried up a bit as that round was obsolete after World War II for the most part. So we got that, and kind of piggybacking off the same caliber, same era of weapon. We got the Berthier Model 0715, Bolt action rifle fed from a three round uh, packet clip. And these were also same thing used by French colonial forces and stuff and captured the same way as the Lavelle 1886 93. And you can see a picture here of somebody holding an 0715. And then with that, you're also gonna find the Berthier model 1916 with the five round packet clip feed system and the extended magazine on the bottom. So these were all going to be found very early on being used against the uh, the French by the Viet Minh. And then, of course, you've got the mainstay of the French military post-World War II, or 1940s rather, is going to be the Moss 36 bolt-action rifle chambered in 75 by 54 French. This was used throughout um, against the French and the United States and its allies. And... Uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool little bullet gun. I've done videos on it on my channel. Won't get into it too much. Good weapon, very compact, small, a lot of firepower in that little weapon. And then also you've got the kind of adaptation of the Moss 3651, which had a 22 millimeter NATO grenade launcher attached to it. And the Viet or the North Vietnamese forces loved these because they could capture grenades from U.S. forces and its allies and launch them off of this with blanks that they would either make or that were in stock from the French. Now we're moving on to what would also be an earlier used weapon is the Japanese Arasaka Type 99 short rifle, chambered in 7.7 by 58 Japanese. And these were gonna be left over from the short but you know effective Japanese occupation of Indochina in the early 1940s and late 30s, early 40s. So they were using these as well as, as, well as the Arasaka Type 44 carbine. This is commonly referred to as the cavalry carbine. The Japanese weren't really using cavalry at that point, so I'm just gonna call it the carbine. Same caliber, shorter, compact, folding bayonet on it. Now we're going to move into some more earlier ones, and we're going to have the Chiang Kai-shek Chinese copy of the VZ-24. They were commonly called that because they were used by Chiang Kai-shek and his forces very commonly. And this is a more crude example of the VZ-24, although they worked, they slung lead. And that's all that mattered. Most of these were going to be used in a training capacity after the Indochina War. And they're going to be used by militias and for training recruits on, you know, carrying a weapon and stuff because they're heavy and they kind of give you a feel for it. And the ammo was getting harder to find at that point. So um, then we've got the actual Czech VZ-24, which a lot of these were made in Czechoslovakia, sold to the Chinese under contract. But they're still Czechoslovakian produced VZ-24 Mausers, which is a pretty pretty good rifle, very good bolt action rifle and uh, used all over the world in fact but definitely used in Vietnam very powerful rifle and now we've got the uh, Springfield model 1903 now for this one and the next rifle that I'm going to be talking about very interesting that the US supplied 
these two um, North Vietnamese or Vietnamese forces shortly after World War II when we kind of got involved and during World War II with the Office of Strategic Services. And we supplied these weapons, in, not in huge numbers, but enough to have them be found throughout the entire conflict. That was really interesting. And then with the 1903, the U.S. model 1917 was also sent there under the same kind of uh, context because it was leftover weapons from World War One, and we were, although we were using them in World War Two and supplying them to our allies like the Free French and some U.S. units had them, we still had a surplus of them, so they were sent to North Vietnam. Pretty interesting story. Uh, definitely be making a video on that. I know you guys get angry when I say that, but this series is going to be almost endless. But um, yeah, I'll go into that later. And so now we're going to get into kind of the Soviet weapons that were supplied. And these were supplied pretty much throughout the entire conflict. We've got the KAR-98K, which were the Russian-captured German K-98s from World War II that they sent to North Vietnam for them to use. And these are going to have the lacquered stocks, uh, or shellac stocks, rather, and, you know, painted black and then have all the markings and stuff. But I think all of the ones they found were from... They were Russian captured, so that's pretty interesting. That was used throughout as well. Again, you get a shortage of ammunition a little bit, although the Soviets had quite a bit. Not a very widely found round in North Vietnam, but nevertheless, these were used throughout the entire conflict as well. Now we've got the Mosin Nagant 9130. Of course, that thing, ever since its inception, has been found all over the world. It's still being used today. Um, this is the long version, and we're just going to move on and keep going through all these Mosin Nagant <laughs> variations. So now we've got the M38 carbine, which was just a shortened version of the 9130 intended for cavalry and motorized uh, troops that were in vehicles. And the one thing they didn't like about it is they couldn't attach a bayonet to it. So they came out with the M44, which is an M38 with a folding bayonet attached to it. With that, the Chinese also copied very well the type or the um, M44 and it became the Type 53 rifle. And there's no way to visually tell if it's an, a Soviet M44 or a Type 53 in a picture. Both of them were widely used, but I'm just going to, I just got this one up here as an example. And uh, you're going to see both very heavily used. They were shorter, very powerful weapons, extremely loud, and very widely used by all the North Vietnamese forces throughout both conflicts. So that's a very interesting one. <sighs> all right, we're moving along here. I'm trying to keep this one rather short. Um, because they've been going on for a long time. So, all right, I think I'm doing all right. So now we've got, we're going to move into some sniper rifles quick, and then we'll finish with some cool stuff, some unique stuff. So we've got the Mosin Nagant 9130 PU sniper that was very widely used. These were found all the time. People were using them because they're very effective. At that point, they weren't entirely outdated. It's a bolt-action rifle with a three-and-a-half power scope on it. Very effective against Allied forces and French forces. So, um We've got the Mosin Gat 91 PU sniper. And now we've got the obviously very famous and widely used and well liked by forces and still used today the SVD Dragunov rifle. This is a 10 round 76254 magazine fed AK platform semi automatic rifle with a uh, scope on it. And these were very well liked and very common, mainly in the 1960s. So it would have been used widely against the French at all because it was a relatively new design at that point but it was definitely used against uh, South Vietnamese, American, Australian, uh, Korean forces throughout the entire Vietnam War, and it was very effective. So those are the two main sniper rifles that were used. There's a bunch of um, rigged up VZ-24s, K-98s, 1903s and stuff that they kind of made in their, their own little gun factories, aka somebody's house that they were t putting mounts on and trying to rig this up to hold a zero. So, but there's so many of those that I don't want to list those, but pretty much all the rifle, all the bolt action rifles I just said, you could probably find one that was Vietnamese modified to have a scope on it to be used as a sniper rifle. But the two that were actually sent to them in the same condition they were used in were the Mosin Gant PU and the SVD Dragunov. So now we've got some interesting stuff. Um, something I was reading was that they would take like the really old French colonial firearms, like the, probably the reserve units and... You know, they just probably sat, would use the um, Gra model 1874 rifle that was chambered in 11 by, oh God, I forgot. Anyway, it's a pretty hefty round. It's a black powder round originally, and then it was replaced by the LaBelle 1886-93, or 1886, as a smokeless powder rifle. 
So what the Vietnamese apparently would do is they would cut these down sometimes and they would rechamber them to shoot uh, 410 caliber shotgun shells. And these would be used as a uh, close quarters kind of thing in tunnels or whatever, or very close fighting. So they pretty much made their own shotgun out of this. And uh, I found that very interesting because that's a really old rifle and messing around with cartridges and chamber reaming like, that you don't really know about is pretty risky, but apparently they were used more widely than I thought. So that's very interesting. Um, figure out how to make this old rifle work, I guess, is what they, what they thought. So very, very cool. And then with that, they'd also take these, these Grau rifles and uh, modify them to take Walther P38 magazines and fire nine millimeter to make kind of a destroyer carbine. Also used for the same thing, close quarters, very effective weapon. Um, I don't know how, because 11 millimeter is a lot bigger than nine millimeter, so it would probably be bouncing around. So it's definitely intended for close quarters and not exactly safe. There were some modifier that they found to take the Walther P38 magazines, which is pretty cool. It'd be cool to have one of those in a collection. So now we're, we're kind of going to delve into some of the homemade rifles that, that were made. A lot of single shot, uh, weird, just absolutely probably unsafe, even by t uh, those days standards, uh, like single shot, pretty much zip guns. But they would use parts from real weapons or they'd manufacture their own stuff. And this is also Ian from Forgotten Weapons Territory. I don't know a lot about these, but I'm sure he's done more videos on them than I will ever do. So check out his channel, of course, if you haven't already. Excuse me, there's a couple examples right here that I've just got up on the pictures of just some homemade stuff. They look about what you'd expect from a homemade firearm. Uh, again, all you need is one shot to take a life. So, you know, keep that, keep that in mind, take that into consideration. With these guns, they look horrible, but if you can get one shot off and it doesn't kill you while you're shooting it, that's a win. So, yeah. All right, we barreled through those because um, I, I tried to stay on topic and not go off on tangents about each one of these guns because I love them all. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the mainstay of bolt guns that you're going to see. Again, there was stuff from all over the world, so this isn't going to be a complete list. None of these are complete lists. And, you know, there was probably some Finnish stuff that popped up that the Soviets captured and sent there and British stuff, you name it. But um, the majority of, you know, pictures that I found and, and, again, weapons caches and accounts from veterans, this is a pretty solid starter list of what you're probably going to find for bolt action slash sniper rifles in Vietnam. So thanks for bearing with me on this uh, video. I'm trying to get through these. The machine gun video, I might have to break that up into two parts, but I'll try to zip through it like I did with this. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like button on this video and subscribe, hit the notification bell. And I uh, hope you learned something. It's pretty cool making these videos. They're a lot of work for me, but I think they're worth it to kind of give some, shed some light on the weapons that were used. And then we're gonna get into some cooler stuff down the line. I'm just trying to get all the basic knowledge, uh, context for when I make future videos and I'm able to talk about things and you can go and reference these videos, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of the, the intent of these first say 100 or 200 videos so yeah anyway thanks for watching everybody i appreciate it and uh consider supporting the channel links to that are in the description and i appreciate you watching we'll see you on the next vid